Can you imagine that 260 million children in the world do not have the opportunity to go to school? They are deprived of education and thus of a better life. Enabling education means equipping these young children well for their future, for a self-determined life. And that's, dear colleagues, why it's worth it to fight for educational equity. That's the reason why I want to introduce to you that wonderful lady to my left, Teboho from BMW South Africa. Thank you, Ilka. Thank you very much, Ilka. You have shown that great things can happen when you combine your personal drive with the knowledge, the network, and the dedication of the One Young World delegates. Please give another warm welcome and applause to Tiboho. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello, One Young World. I'm Tabora Mahoshi from South Africa, and I would love to share with you a story from my hometown, Swani, and how it is closely linked to One Young World. Access to education, like Ilka just said, is still a challenge in my home country. There is usually one of two options for children from townships. Either one, they have a parent or a guardian who is able to afford to send them to school. Or two, access to good and free education. I consider myself very fortunate that I do not have to be limited to those two options. However, that is not the case for millions. I have been able to go through a journey that allowed job security for me, and I've been with BMW for just over four years. In my current role, I feel obligated and obliged to make change within the educational space. Very close to our plant in Pretoria, Plant Roslyn, there is a primary school that we have adopted, Njapeu Primary School. Over the years, we have worked and on doing many different spaces of refurbishment. We've built multi sporting grounds, we've built a library, we've donated computer labs and a complete refurbishment of the classrooms. Despite... Thank you. Despite the changes that we have made, they still face many challenges. As some of you may know, South Africa suffers from power cuts. Now, with this problem, I have been blessed enough to have colleagues in Munich, Sabrina, who was a 2019 One Young World Ambassador, and Jacob, a 2021 One Young World Ambassador, who both work for the BMW Research and Development Center based in Munich. They came up with a great initiative called Power Up, which sees us using um, concept EV batteries and using them as energy storage containers. I would like to introduce you to Sabrina and Jacob to tell you more about the initiative. Thank you very much and hello Manchester. Hello One Young World. This is Munich calling the home of BMW. Every single BMW is developed here and of course that includes the electric models as well. During this development process, batteries are produced that cannot be sold afterwards and are recycled instead, despite being in perfect health. For us, this is a waste of valuable resources. This is why our idea was to take these healthy batteries and turn them into even more positive things. To produce green electricity, reduce the carbon footprint and empower social mobility. And we're better to do this than in South Africa, home to one of our BMW plants and where we've also spoken to our colleagues who showed us the school. It's a perfect fit for our first pilot. With six good batteries, our system can power, for example, 38 computers, 100 lights, and a water pump, basically the whole school day and night. And on top, this saves the school 40 tons of CO2 every year as it replaces unreliable coal energy production. We first pitched our initiative to do this in 2019, and to be honest, Progress was quite slow at the beginning. No one cheers when you come up with an idea that creates more work for them. But we stuck with it and we persevered. If you're persistent and you believe in your goals, the right moment will come along and at some point, it all works out in the end. In 2021, we got the green light to continue working on our project for another two years. 
Behind me, you see one of the pieces of equipment we use for battery production. These batteries have a super high energy density, which means that they really pack an electric punch. Folks, you see, everyone can have an impact, and One Young World can be the spark for initiatives just like this. So back to you in Manchester, enjoy your time, and let yourself be inspired at One Young World. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Sabrina and Jacob. As you'll see on the screens, that is how the energy storage unit looks currently. Ilka, you visited the school back in April. Why is it so important for BMW Group and yourself to support such great initiatives? Thank you to Boho. I think a big applause to her, first of all. I think there's a good reason to support projects like this personally and also for, for BMW. Because we are living in times where it feels that the world is moving apart instead of moving closer together due to all the challenges we are facing in these times. And it's our obligation to empower responsible leadership in these times. Last year was my first One Young World, Kate. It was great. It was such an experience. And after a month, I met with our One Young World ambassadors in Munich. And one of them said to me, Ilka, we have heard all these inspiring stories at the One Young World. We have met all these incredible people who are driven by their personal biography, and I think we have seen it just recently in the, in the panel before. Driven by their personal biography have already impacted so many people at an early age. And he said, he even added, I'm only 30 years old, I haven't impacted anybody. So what can we, in a large company, being an employee in a large company, really do, change? I don't know if you might think like this when you come back from the One Young World. But if so, keep in mind the example of Teboho, Jacob and Sabrina. I think they have shown that you can really make a change when you see the need for action and you take it. And mostly, the need for action is just around the corner. You don't have to go far. It's somewhere in your company, it's somewhere in your department, it might be somewhere in your community. But maybe you recognized that the project of the, two, of the three of them has something very special in it because the three of them leveraged the company's effort to make mobility more sustainable and added a social dimension to it. And this is exactly what companies have to deliver in the future. They have to balance economic success with environmental and social responsibility. Today and in the future, companies will be measured by how sustainable they operate and how much value they contribute to our societies. To make this change happen, you need still economic success. It's essential. But you also need responsible leaders. Mm -hmm. And Jacob, Sabrina and Teboho showed that responsible leadership or respons being a responsible leader is not a position, it's an attitude. And this attitude means, and I think your example showed it perfectly, that you have to be visionary and realistic at the same time. Because only being visionary doesn't lead anywhere. You have to bring the traction on the road, as we say it at BMW. You have to be, at the same time, engaged yourself, and you need to be able to inspire others to follow. Because as Jacob said, it's sometimes not easy to go and convince people to have more work. You have to be resilient and adaptable at the same time. I think we spoke about this earlier today. And, and this is even the most important part, you have to be and stay confident whatever challenge you're facing. With this attitude, the three of them, Teboho, you, Jacob, and Sabrina, they will change the lives of hundreds of children in South Africa. With this attitude, 
They will inspire many of you to follow their example. This attitude is what I call true responsible leadership. And when you go home from One Young World, I just want you to keep one thing in mind. If you want to be the best in the world, you have to be the best for the world. And this young lady taught me a nice expression, a nice South African word for this. Yes. It's called Ubuntu. Yes. Give <laughs> yes, welcome. And you tell me, or tell us a little bit, what is it all about, about this Ubuntu? I know there's a lot of South Africans here, but... Woo! <laughs> and I know there's a lot of BMW delegates here. <laughs> tell us about Ubuntu. Yes. Ubuntu means humanity. In my mother tongue, this is literally saying a universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity. It's a principle which Tata Nelson Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu lived by. So Ilka, you say, if a leader needs to be the best for the world, they should be the best for the world. I would say a true leader needs to live by Ubuntu. Okay, I think that's the key word. One young world, let's be more Ubuntu! Ubuntu.